now let's talk about China, where rather than diplomacy, the U.S. is engaging in aggressive and shows of force. The U.S. is launching its new uh, Pacific War Games called Pacific Iron 21, and it is going to contain a record amount of stealth aircraft, at least 25 uh, F-22s and 10 F-15s, as well as two C-130J refueling tankers and what the point of this uh, mission is i guess is the you there's a whole bunch of runways on smaller islands in the pacific ocean and the u.s wants to make sure that it could launch and land all of its fighter aircraft from these islands that way if china would ever to try to or the u.s would end up at war with china they would have more targets they would have to hit to reduce the U.S. presence in the region. Now, there's a lot of logistical problems with this, including several of these uh, islands that the U.S. is talking about are so far away from the South China Sea, the Philippines, Taiwan, Japan, that the U.S. would need the mid-air refueling. Also, these runways are, are very small, and uh, you can't land the refueling tankers on them. You can't land uh, massive cargo planes on them. And so, you know, if the U.S. is looking to use these airstrips as anything more than just uh, landing and taking off, and for what purpose, you know, to repair the planes and all that, it seems they would have to deploy more assets. But this is a part of the U.S. military buildup in the Pacific, and this is targeting potential war with China. Um Massive number of bases and little islands we're talking about uh, around the Guam area of the Pacific. While this is going on, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin is traveling to Southeast Asia where he's going to visit Singapore, the Philippines, and Vietnam. Uh, he's going to be talking with all these countries uh, about China being a, a priority threat in the region and what these countries are going to do and how they're going to work with the U.S. to combat the Chinese threat. In particular, in the Philippines, Austin will likely be discussing the Visiting Forces Agreement, which is the treaty that allows uh, U.S. troops in that country. Uh, there's some issues between the U.S. And, and the Philippines with this, mainly resulting Team from I think the erratic nature of Philippines President Rodrigo Duarte, who at one point was going to scrap the VFA with the U.S. and look to maybe uh, be a little bit closer to China. At the time, the U.S. was uh, being pretty critical of the Philippines because of the drug war that Duarte was raging waging in his country. They were killing a lot of innocent people, basically accused of using, uh, using drugs. That was enough uh, to get you assassinated. And so, uh, the you know, the, there there was some issues, and, and the Philippines kind of reached out to China, and I think was rebuffed. And now the Philippines is having an issue in some of its fishing grounds, where it says that China is encroaching on them. Now, if you look at the Chinese territorial water claims in the South China Sea, they do seem rather large. But the U.S. shouldn't be concerning itself uh, with what these countries are doing. And if they're all concerned about what China is doing, they should concentrate on their own, on banding together. And they they you know the the U.S. shouldn't be involved involved in this. Uh, we shouldn't be concerned about having a visiting forces agreement with the Philippines. We should be trying to cut ties with that country, again, whose leader is committed a lot of human rights abuses. Last week on the show, I talked about China being hit with sanctions over uh, the, the U.S. alleging Hong Kong uh, abu uh, human rights abuses in Hong Kong. China responded to the U.S. sanctions by issuing sanctions against the U.S., including uh, a Trump official Wilbur Ross. Uh, while that was going on, you know, the U.S. is sanctioning China. China is retaliating against the U.S. with sanctions. Uh, Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman met with top Chinese diplomats on Monday in China to discuss uh, the relationship between the two countries. Uh, the D State Department described the conversation as a frank and open discussion. It's probably better that this occurred behind closed doors rather than the debacle that we saw uh, in Alaska in March when uh, Blinken met with the Chinese foreign minister and the two countries uh, traded fairly hostile statements. And so uh, the State Department says it raised concern with China over Hong Kong, Zhejiang, Tibet, Taiwan, the South and East 
East China Seas and other areas. It seems like a whole bunch of things that have absolutely nothing to do with the U.S. people or the U.S. government. It may be that China is doing terrible things to some of these people. It doesn't seem like, you know, Taiwan, Hong Kong or Xinjiang coming under more control of the uh, kind of Chinese Communist Party would increase freedom. At the same time, U.S. intervention, uh, U.S. military buildup in the region really isn't creating any additional freedom either. And we're not able to prevent China from uh, controlling territories that are, you know, close or historically Chinese. Well, that doesn't mean the West and uh, is going to give up on its efforts to try to tell China to do right off of or, you know, even a, almost a part of the Chinese mainland. Uh, with the UK's new aircraft carrier, the HMS Elizabeth, entering the South China Sea, uh, the a HMS uh Queen Elizabeth is with the Carrier Strike Group. It's also with the HMS Defender, uh, which recently also entered the South China Sea after it was, uh, you know, messing around off the coast of Crimea, uh, provoking warning shots being fired uh, from Russian ships at the HMS, well, not at the HMS Defender, but, you know, enough to deter that ship from its current, that it, it was current path. And so, uh, the, you know, this is more provocative action from the U.S. and its allies in the South China Sea.